Hello friends, welcome back to Digitalk. In this video, I am going to explain you how you can download and install the Wildfly version of your JBoss. Okay, in part one, two, and three, we have discussed a lot about the different versions of Wildfly, JBoss, AF, and Red Hat, Red Hat EAP. Okay, there are different flavors of uh, the JBoss version based on whether it is an open source version, whether it is a proprietary version. Okay, and based on that, we had done a differentiation between all the versions. Okay, and then apart from that, what we have discussed so far is about in part one, two, and three is about the uh, basic concept of JBoss mode where we have discussed about the standalone and domain mode. And then after the standalone and domain mode, we have discussed about the domain controller, host controller, process controller, what is the role of all of these controllers when we talk about the JBoss server instances, okay? And then we discuss about the server groups and different kinds of profiles, how we can deploy the applications in JBoss server, what is the role of server groups, okay? And then there we have a different profiles and what is the role of the profile based on the kind of a functionality that is required for you when you are going to build your architecture or your environment where you have the JBoss application server. Okay, and then we have discussed about the security bindings. So bindings is something about the network ports. Okay, so when we run the JBoss server, there are a lot of different ports occupied based on the, the functionalities that we have enabled, whether it is a uh, port number for your admin management console, whether it is a port for your inbuilt web server, Okay, so there are different ports that is defined inside the security bindings. Okay, so I hope that we have already gone to the part one, two, and three. Okay, now from part four onwards, we will go for the installation of our JBoss servers and then we'll follow up with the deployments and then creation of data sources and then tuning or updations of your JVM heap parameters and many more configurations. Okay, so in, in this particular video, let us see how we can download and install the Wildfly standalone version of your JBoss server. Okay, so J Wildfly, as you know, that this is an open source version of your JBoss, which is now renamed as Wildfly. Okay, so you can go to the wildfly.org and then download section website. Okay, and then from there, you can download the latest version of your Wildfly. Okay, in my case, when I have downloaded the 27.0.1 version. Okay, so this is an open source. You don't need any kind of a licensing for this one. You can easily download and install on your uh, machine okay and then to run uh, because this is again a java based application server right so you need a jdk for a certified jdk for that one so which you can download from the oracle websites okay and the documentation of uh, the corresponding certified jdk is also available on the wildfly.org website as well where you can go and check for the certifications as well that the corresponding the the jboss wildfly which you are downloading and what is the corresponding certified jdk for that particular version okay in my case i have downloaded the wildfly 27.0.1 and the corresponding jdk certified jdk was jdk 11 okay so i have downloaded the jdk 11 from the oracle websites okay so now when we talk about the installations mode, okay, so when we go for the installation of the uh, Wildfly, okay, so the, the headings in this video is a bit confusing, okay, so you can ignore that one, you can consider it as a Wildfly instead of installing JBoss EAP, okay, so EAP I am going to cover in the next video, which is the uh, version from the Red Hat. Okay, so this video is specifically about Wildfly. Okay, so Wildfly is an open source software, JBoss software, which comes in a single zip installation. Okay, that means you don't have any uh, uh, generic jar files or you don't have any exe file for Windows. Okay, you will get a single installation file, which will be a zip file. Okay, which you can download from the website. So when we go for the EAP, okay, so EAP is, as I said, it is a uh, uh, enhanced version from the Red Hat, which uh, the way which they provide the support as well. So that come with the some default other installers as well. When we talk about the generic jar installer and then with the exe installer along with that RPM installer, so that we will discuss in the next video when we we'll go for the EAP downloader installation. Okay, so now here we are talking about the Wildfly. So Wildfly, you will only have a zip file. Okay, that means you just go to website, download your uh, zip installation folder and extract it inside a particular folder in your directory. And that would be referred as your EAP home. Okay, so EAP is a version from the Red Hat, but as a standard, I am considering it as an EAP home, which you can refer as JBoss home as well. Okay, this is the environment variable, variable that you can define according to your requirements. Either you can define it as an EAP home or you can define it as a JBoss home or you can define it as a Wildfly home. Okay, so that would be your base folder where you will extract the contents, okay, and will act as the installation directory or you can say the EAP home or your JBoss home or Wildfly home. So once you will extract that one, okay, 
in that case your installation is complete okay that means it is a zip folder right and then you have extracted and installation is completed okay so when you will extract the folder okay then inside that you will see a lot of folders and the files okay and there is a different purpose of each and every folder and file but some files and folders are very important from as an uh, jboss admin okay or whether you are working in a support you need the knowledge of certain folders and files but exactly the role of all those particular files and uh, folders okay so now we know about we have a two mode of our uh, jboss okay one is a standalone mode and second is a domain mode so in standalone we have a individual server that means an independent jboss server instance is running right and when we talk about the domain mode okay in domain mode we have a multiple group of servers which we can define inside a server group which is controlled by your domain controller host controller and the process controller which will act as a clustered system which is need for the high availability where you have a multiple jboss server instances are running in parallel so that anyone get crash you should your application should be available from the other servers and this is required for failure as well when you have a session which is connected to server one in your domain and that server get crashed then that the particular session which is connected to that particular server along with the session data should fail over to other other instance of in the cluster okay so this is the difference between standalone and, and, and domain server mode so now we have two modes so that means once you will unzip the installer okay then you will have a two different stack of folders okay one is specifically for the standalone mode and second is specifically for the domain mode okay so as you can see on the screen you have a uh, different folders there and then inside that one you will have a folder with name domain and then inside that you will have a folder with name standalone okay so domain folder is contain the files that is required for the domain mode of your jboss and when you're when you are uh, running your jboss in standalone mode for that you have a standalone folder and all the configuration files will be at this inside the standalone mode okay so bin folder is is a standard folder in, in if i would compare with other uh, software okay there, there would be a bin folder and in bin folder you will see all the customized scripts which is used for the start stop of your application servers and then to create users and to connect with your cli you see that is command line interface okay etc so you have a different kind of a environment file as well which you can run to set up the environment variables okay all these startup and then environment files will be inside your bin folder okay and standalone mode as i said in the if you are wanted to run your jboss server in standalone mode okay then all the configuration file for a standalone mode it will be inside the standalone folders okay and when we talk about a domain mode if you are going to configure your jboss in, in domain mode with the multiple servers in your server groups for high availability okay in that case your domain folder will contain all the configuration files which is required for the configuration of in the domain mode right now when we talk about when we talk about the creating a new management user in wildfly jboss so what exactly it means that means jboss by default will not come with any default user okay if you know about the web logic or some other application server that you installed and during installation after installation when you create a domain okay then then it it prompt you to specify the username and password for your domain okay but when we install the jboss as i said which is a, uh, a zip installer okay and uh, for that there is no default user that means once the installation is done after that you can able to run your management console that means just like an admin server in web logic okay you can uh, you can start your uh, uh, server in standalone mode or maybe in the domain mode as well okay but when you are going to access the management console you have to specify a username and password but because there is no username and password by default so you will not able to log in right so to 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 log into your management console after installation of your jboss uh, wildfly okay you have to create a user okay so what is the process for creating a user okay so by default as i said when you when you install your uh, your wildfly or jboss okay then it create a lot of directories okay so there would be a directory as i said inside the bin directory and you will see all the scripts inside the bin directory okay so there is a script inside the bin directory with the name add hyphen user dot sh for unix based system and then dot pat for windows okay so this particular command you can use to add a user just after the installation of your jboss server or wildfly server okay and that user you can refer okay when you are logging to your management console okay so there are two categories for when you define a user one is a management user and second is the application user okay so when you are creating a user which i will show you in the next screen so 
if you will select a management user that it will be a main admin user for your control complete domain okay for complete your jboss server management okay in console so it has all the access for your complete domain it can do any kind of a configuration so and if you select the application user okay then it would be applicable to only the limited functionalities on applications like the deployment of your applications this is application specific users okay now because we need an admin user for the wild fly after the installation for the complete end-to-end -end management so we will create a management user okay and what is the process for that one okay so as i said you have to just go to inside your bin folder so in my case i have installed this wild fly inside the c colon jboss folder inside that i went into bin folder and then i run the add hyphen user dot bat file first it will prompt you to add the user under which interface okay management user you wanted to want a management user or you want a application user i have selected the a which is a management user then it will ask you for the enter the username where i have given the name as jboss eap and then it will prompt you for to enter the password okay and then re-enter the password okay and then it will say that you have to about to user jboss ea for realm management realm because it is going to add it inside the management realm it will ask you for the confirmation give the yes then it will use after the after you can see the output where it is going to edit the what all the files it is going to be added for which is specific to your user and then at last it will prompt you that for a secondary host controller connecting to the primary or for a remote connection for server to server jakarta enterprise beans call so what does it mean is that if we, this is specifically applicable for your domain mode if you have a uh, server you want you are which you are going to configure in your domain mode okay then you need a same user across all the instances okay for the management purpose uh, for centralized control so here because i am installing it in a standalone mode so i am selecting as a no because it is a standalone server okay in the next video when i will show you about the installation in and configuration in the domain mode there i will show you there i will show you about the uh, use of this particular option but here for a standalone you can select as a no okay and then click on continue okay after that it it is shown in the previous output as well what all the configuration file is going to update but a two main file that is going to update is if you are creating a management user the file which is there inside the configuration folder of standalone okay which is mgmt hyphen users dot properties file which is this file will get updated if you are creating a management user if you will create an application user then it will get updated in the application hyphen users dot properties file there would be an entry added in this particular file now once it is done you can start your standalone jboss instance and for that what is the command go inside your uh, installation folder bin folder and then run the command standalone.sh in case of your unix based system but if it is a windows then it would be a standalone.bat it will take a couple of seconds okay to start your wildfly server and then you can access the console of your wildfly with the help of http double slash then your server ip okay in which your particular server is running in my case it is a local host so i have given the local host ip which is 127.0.0.1 and the port by default port of your jboss web server which is 8080 okay if this 8080 port is occupied in your machine then your server will not start and then you will get the network port binding kind of a errors and make sure to use the proper port in that case okay and now when we talk about the configurations of the standalone domain so the main configuration file for your standalone mode is standalone.xml file okay so as i said there would be a different folders for standalone mode and different for the domain mode and inside that you will have all the configuration files for your domains right and your and your standalone folders so for standalone there would be a standard uh, one single configuration file which will contain almost your all of your configuration which is called standalone.xml okay and but if you are working on the windows system that you have to update some parameters in standalone.conf.bat file okay this specific file is designed for the windows for example you wanted to change the jvm parameters the heap size of your standalone uh, standalone server jboss server in that case if you are in windows then you have to update the standalone.conf.bat file but if you are in a linux or unix based systems then the configuration file for updation is standalone.xml file okay click on that one and then you have to access the console okay and once you will access the management console okay so by default the management console is your triple nine zero okay and this is the management console and then once you will access it one then it will prompt you for the username and password okay and once you it will prompt you for the username and password then you can give the user that you have created during the installation okay and then specify the password and then you can able to log into your wildfly server
okay and there you will see a lot of different options for deployment for configurations runtime patching and access control and we are going to explore this in our next more few videos so thanks for watching this video and stay tuned for a few more interesting videos